We delay the Jack Benny program a minute for an important Washington bulletin. The OPA announces its point value ratings upon canned and processed foods under the new ration system, effective March 1st. The schedule is more severe than anticipated. These point ration values will cut canned food consumption to at least one half less than last year's level. Each person gets 48 ration points a month. This ration allows, as one example, purchase of one medium-sized can of peas, a medium can of tomatoes, a large can of peaches, three cans per month. A pound and a quarter can of peas is valued at 16 points. Fruits and fruit juices cost more heavily in ration points. Canned soups the least. Canned baby foods are rated low at one point and some at two points. The Grape Nuts Flakes program coming to you from Chicago, Illinois and starring Jack Benny. With Mary Livingston, Dennis Day, Rochester, yours truly, Don Wilson, and our guest conductor, Bob Crosby and his orchestra. Good evening, friends. <laughs> Did you hear what I just called you? Yes, I said friends. But suppose you say friends, eh? How can I be friends with that guy? We haven't even met. Well, one definition of a friend is that someone is on the same side with you. Yes, sir, just look at it. Uh, look it up in the best dictionaries and say, you try one dish of toasted brown, moldy, rich grape nuts flakes and you'll be on my side of the fence. Well, that's what grape nuts flakes does every time. Makes you a friend after one luscious bowlful. In fact, the sweet as a nut flavor of Grape Nuts Flakes is a friend from way back because it's the wide awake, malty rich flavor of Grape Nuts in exciting toasted flake form. So make friends with Grape Nuts Flakes tomorrow morning, will you? Just ask for America's fastest growing breakfast cereal, Grape Nuts Flakes, in the 12 ounce economy size package. my buddy played by the orchestra. Now, ladies and gentlemen, from Chicago, Illinois, where we are broadcasting for the AAFTTCCS. Yeah. <laughs> that stands for the, wait till I get this straight, that stands for the Army Air Forces Technical Training Command Chicago Schools. We bring you our master of ceremonies, J.E.R.K. Benny. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Hello again, this is J-E-R-K talking. Uh, that, uh, that stands for Jack Entertains Rather Comically. Isn't, uh, isn't that what you, isn't that what you had in mind, Don? Well, not exactly, Jack. You see, comically doesn't begin with a K. It does tonight, brother. <laughs> and incidentally, Don, the next time you introduce me as a jerk... You'll be sitting on a bench in the perk looking for work. <laughs> if you get what I murk. Uh, me. Uh, me. I mean, for heaven's I mean. sakes, Jack, you're always ribbing me. You keep telling everybody I have five chins, and I'm very sensitive about that. Well, then grow a beard or wear a horse collar or something. <laughs> anyway, I never said you had five chins. I merely said that your Adam's apple only comes out on Groundhog Day. <laughs> Anyway, Don, here we are in Chicago and broadcasting for all these boys who are studying to be Army Air Force technicians. I understand they teach soldiers here to become airplane mechanics, panel instrument mechanics, and meteor, um, uh, meteorologists. Uh, meteorologists? What does that mean, Jack? And a great majority of the boys... <laughs> are learning to be radio operators on two- and four-engine bombers. Well, they must know plenty about radios. Oh, they do, Don, they do, and I wish one of them would look at my radio set. It's in terrible shape. So what's the matter with it? Well, every time I tune into Fred Allen's program, the aerial coils up and strikes at me like a rattlesnake. <laughs> Look, 
With this cold I've got, I sound a little like Alan, you know? <laughs> Heaven forbid. <laughs> oh, oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. Hello. Well, listen to that, Mary. You got uh, <laughs> you got you got more applause than I did. Well, why not? I'm the only girl on the program. That isn't it, Mary. Let me tell you something. These fellows here are too busy with their training and their and their drilling and their studying <laughs> to, to think about girls. Well, he's back to J E R K again. <laughs> I mean it. All day long, these boys attend classes and take notes on military science and, 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 and principles of electronics. And in the evening, if they happen to have any time off, they settle down with a good book. Stop laughing, fellas. He's too old to remember. I know what I'm talking about. Anyway, Mary, here we are back in the USA after a whirlwind trip through Canada. By the way, Mary, uh, where are you staying here in Chicago? Oh, I've got a lovely suite at the Ambassador East. The Ambassador East? Uh, very swank, very swank. Uh, where, uh, where are you, Don? I'm at the Blackstone Hotel, and I have a beautiful room overlooking Lake Michigan. The Blackstone? Uh, well, very nice, very nice. Where are you stopping, Jack? Me? I'm at the Stockyard Plaza. <laughs> I, uh, I have a lovely room overlooking Armour and Company. <laughs> on, a, on a clear day, you can see me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Tell Don what happened to you yesterday afternoon. Oh, it was nothing. What was it, Barry? Well... Jack was leaning over a fence at the stockyards looking at a great big fat steer. Uh-huh. And a man from the ration board came along and said, either stop drooling or I'll tear a coupon out of your book. <laughs> I fooled him, though. I went up to my room, peeked through the curtains, and drooled my head off. Well, hello, Dennis. Say, hey, Mr. Benny, I'm boiling mad, and I'm gonna quit. I said, hello, Dennis. Hello. What do you mean, Dennis, you're gonna quit? What are you so mad about? You hired Bing Crosby tonight, and this program isn't big enough for the both of us. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Dennis. We haven't got Bing Crosby on the program tonight. We have Bob Crosby, his brother. Brother, he says. Well, he is. I've given you the best years of my life, and you throw me away like an old shoe. <laughs> Who throws away shoes nowadays? <laughs> I'm going to have my shoes fixed up. Where are you going to get buttons for them? <laughs> From Button Rouge, Louisiana. Oh, oh. I, I can go along with a gag. <laughs> now, calm down, Dennis. This is really Bob Crosby, Bing's brother. Here, I'll have you meet him. Fellows, Bob Crosby. Hi, man. Bob, we're certainly glad to have you with us. It's a real pleasure. Well, same here, Mr. Benny. Oh, let's not be formal. You can call me Jack. Well, thanks. And you can call me Bing. I mean, Bob. Oh, ho! Dennis, believe me, this isn't Bing Crosby. Look, this fellow here is wearing a necktie. <laughs> and he... He is. And he doesn't smell from horses. As I was saying, Bob, I'm glad to have you here. It was darn nice of you to come all the way from California just to be with us. Oh, don't mention it, Jack. You're my idea of a great comedian, a real performer, and a grand guy. And working with you makes this the happiest moment of my life. Well. Wow, listen to Crosby pour syrup on that old wheat cake. <laughs> Mary, I'm not a wheat cake. Yeah, whoever saw a wheat cake with big blue eyes? Oh, shut up. <laughs> You'll have to excuse her, Bob. Mary's always making remarks like that, huh? Oh, I think Mary is one of the cleverest and most brilliant performers in radio. And working with her makes this the happiest moment of my life. Hmm. He's 100% baloney, but I'm human. <laughs> He's a 
Very fine gentleman. Well, let's have your song, Dennis. Let Crosby sing first, then I'll show him up. Dennis, this isn't... <laughs> Dennis, look, this isn't Bing Crosby. Look, that's a plain blue shirt he's got on. No palm trees or anything. Now, believe me, he's not going to compete with you. Of course not, Dennis. Well, you're the finest young tenor in the country. And working with you makes this the, the happiest, happiest moment of, of my life. life. I know. There we go. All right, Dennis, let's have your song. That Crosby is really a sweet guy. From an old familiar score I know it well, that melody It's funny how a theme Recalls a favorite dream A dream that brought you so close to me I've heard that song before The lyric said Forevermore Forevermore The memory Please have them play again And I'll remember just when I heard that lovely I've heard that song before The lyric said Forevermore Forevermore The memory Please have them play it again And I'll remember just when I song before sung by Dennis Day, and Dennis, that was very, very good. Thank you. Oh, say, Mr. Benny. Yes, kid. Well, I'll probably get slugged for this, but do you mind if I move out of the stockyards plaza? What for? What for, Dennis? We have a lovely room there. Yeah, but between the cows mooing and your snoring, I can't get a wink of sleep. <laughs> well, Dennis, if I snore, all you gotta do is reach over and give me a nudge. I tried that last night, and you kissed me. <laughs> Holy smoke. You see, kid, I, I dreamt I was dancing with Hetty Lamar. I, I kissed her and she slapped my face. So did I. <laughs> hmm. I don't care about myself, but you owe Miss Lamar an apology. All right, I'll send her a note. Well, speaking of dreams, Jack, I had an amazing one last night. You did, Don, said Benny, with the brains of a wheat cake. <laughs> uh, what uh, was your dream, Don? Well... Last night I dreamed that I, Don Wilson, was a toasty brown, sweet as a nut, grape nuts flake. You a flake? Yes. Mm. I was a grape nuts flake. <laughs> well. And a fella came along and poured me into a big 12-ounce economy-sized package. Gee, this is thrilling. Wilson in a 12-ounce package. That's a hot one. <laughs> This is a dream like when I kissed you, remember? Continue, Don. Well, Jack, hmm? a little later, a charming American housewife... ...came to a grocery store and bought the package I was in. Dennis, take your hand out of there. This is a dream. <laughs> Go ahead, Don. 
And you should have seen the look of delight on her husband's face the next morning. When he saw a whole bowl full of us grape nut flakes right on the table in front of him. Yes, yes. And then what happened? He poured sugar and cream on me and I woke up. Well done. Don, that was certainly a wonderful dream. It certainly was, Mr. Wilson. And being associated with a man who can dream he was a grape nut flake makes this the happiest moment of my life. <laughs> I like this, Crosby. He's so sincere. <laughs> now, fellas, going from dreams to our schedule for next week, here it is. Tomorrow, we'll be playing a show for the boys at Fort Sheridan. And Tuesday, we're going out to Great Lakes Naval Training Station. Good old Great Lakes. Oh, say, uh, Jack, that's where you were stationed during the last war, wasn't it? Was it the last war? I thought you were with Dewey. It was the last war. <laughs> I was with Dewey Schwartz, a friend of mine. <laughs> <laughs> and look at uh, and, and fellas, incidentally uh, When I get there, you know I'm wearing my old sailor suit When I go there Tuesday The same one they issued me in 1917 But Mr. Benny, how can you wear the same suit? You must have gained a lot of weight since then I have, now it fits me <laughs> Well, speaking of my sailor suit, I had the strangest experience this morning. Almost unbelievable. What was it, Jack? Well, I put my uniform on, and as I was adjusting the necktie, a moth stuck his head out of the breast pocket and said, They got you again, eh, bud? <laughs> it was the freshest moth I've ever met. You know? you know, Mr. Benny, somehow I can't picture you as a sailor. Well, I was, Dennis. Why, at Great Lakes, they used to call me Benny the Skipper. And you still walk that way. <laughs> They call me Skipper because I was a real old Saul. I got a gag for that, too. Well, keep it. <laughs> I was a darn good sailor. Tell me, Jack, uh, were you in any battles during the war? Battles? Mm -hmm. Well, yes. I was in the college inn in Chicago one night with four or five of my buddies. <laughs> and a couple of Marines walked in. He and means it... naval battles. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> well, as a matter of fact, Don, I did get a medal for distinguished service. And now, Bob, I think it's about time for... What medal? And now, Bob, I think it's about time... What distinguished service? Hmm. And now, Bob... Either put up or shut up. That's my motto. <laughs> you keep out of this. Now, Bob, I think it's about time for a band number. You all set? I sure am. Say, by the way, Jack, Great Lakes is near Waukegan, your hometown, isn't it? Yes, just a few miles. Well, man, I'd certainly appreciate it if you'd kind of take me over to Waukegan and show me around... Oh, you'd, uh, like to see the place, eh? Yeah, especially that log cabin where you were born. <laughs> well, it wasn't exactly a log cabin, Bob. As a matter of fact, the uh, house I was born in was torn down not long ago. There, there's just a vacant lot there now. You mean to say that they didn't even put up a monument in your honor? No, no, nothing at all. Well, that's a crime. There should be a monument there, and I'm going to take up a collection to see that it's erected. Oh, no, no, Bob. I, I, I don't want, really, I don't want anything like that. You deserve it. Now, who'll be the first to contribute $10? <laughs> hmm. Who'll contribute $10 for a monument to Jack Benny? I will. <laughs> Here you are, Bob. Here's $10 for the Benny Monument Fund. Wheat cakes with ham. What a combination. Mr. Crosby made this suggestion, not me. Well, Bob, let's have your number. Later this evening, I want to get together with you and we'll talk about it. Hold it a minute. Come in. Yes? Well, well, well. Hiya, Jack, old boy. Haven't seen you in 15 years. <laughs> what? I read the Waukegan News Sun as we were broadcasting here. So it says to the little woman, let's run down to Chicago and see my old pal Jack. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, oh, well, thanks. Uh, who is this fellow, Jack? I don't know. I can't seem to place him. Well, how are things with you, pal? How's everything in Waukegan? Oh, swell, swell. 
the old gag set the regards, Sid Block, Sub Wilbur, and Julius Sinekin. Oh, yes, Julius Sinekin. Stinky, we used to call him, huh? Stinky was you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it was one of the gang. Yeah. Well, well, I gotta be leaving now. Say, Jack, when you get to Waukegan, drop by the house. <laughs> I will, I will. Uh, who is this guy, Jack? Wait a minute, I'll find out. Say, pal, where are you living now? Same old place. So long, Jack. <laughs> Know that fellow. Oh, well, go ahead and play, Bob. I wonder if it's Ollie Imerman. No, no, I know. Anything But Love Baby, played by Bob Crosby and his orchestra, and Bob, that was wonderful. Thanks, Jack. Say, Bob, I was thinking of that idea of yours about erecting something on the site where I was born. Do you think it ought to be a monument or a statue? Well, it, it would be pretty hard to get a statue for ten bucks. Oh, that ten dollars I contributed was only the beginning of the fun. There'll be many more donations. Hey, Mary? Hey, Don? Hmm. Get to me before I scream. <laughs> Dennis, give Mr. Crosby $10 voluntarily. Now, how about you, Don? Oh, I'd love to contribute, Jack, but unfortunately, I left my money in my other pants. Mary? Me too. <laughs> now, wait a minute, fellas. Are you in on this thing or not? Don't worry, Jack. As chairman of the finance committee, I'll collect all the donations. Good. Jesus, sweet fella. I hope he doesn't take it on the lamb with all the money. What's that, Jack? I said you're a lamb to be collecting all this money. <laughs> well, so much for the financial end of it. Now, fellas, come in. Oh, it's you. Hey, say, Jack, old fella, I hate to bother you again, but I had to bring the wife in to see you. <laughs> Your wife? Yeah. Say hello to Maggie. Oh, hello, Maggie. Hello, Stinky. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, well, glad to see you again, Maggie. Uh, who is she, Jack? That's the fella's wife. <laughs> but who is he? I don't know. I'm trying to find out. Uh, say, pal, when I get to Waukegan, I'd like to uh, give you folks a ring. What's your number? It's right in the phone book. So long, Jack. <laughs> His face was so familiar, and yet I can't place him. His wife knew me, too. She called me Stinky. Oh, well, it'll come to me. Now, getting back to my monument, fellas. Now, who can that be? Hello? Hello, Mr. Penny, this is Rochester. Listen, Rochester, I'm glad you finally got in touch with me. I've been looking for you all week. Boss, knowing that you've been thinking of me makes this the happiest moment of my life. <laughs> Never 
remind that. Now, where have you been since we got in town Tuesday? Well, boss, as you know, Chicago offers great educational advantages. Uh-huh. So Wednesday, I spent the whole day at the Field Museum of Natural History. Uh-huh. And Thursday, I had a very interesting afternoon at the Adler Planetarium. I see. And what happened Friday? Friday, I met a gal and culture went out the window. <laughs> Another girl. You're always finding a new girl. Well, this is the real thing, boss. I'm in love. You're in love? How do you know? I can't eat, I can't sleep, and I look down with scorn upon a bottle of gin. <laughs> with scorn? Not super scorn, just scorn. <laughs> I know what you mean. Now, Rochester, you don't want to just rush into marriage until you know something about this girl. Has she got money? I think so. I can't find my wallet. <laughs> See, and wait a minute, I just thought of something else. What are you going to tell your girl in Los Angeles? She'll never find out. I suppose she does. Then they'll have to put up a monument for me, too. <laughs> That's what I mean. You better watch out. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, say, boss. Now what? I sent your trunk ahead to St. Joe, Missouri. We're not going to St. Joe for two weeks. Next Sunday, we broadcast from Camp Custer, Michigan. And I'll need a clean shirt at the camp. Just raise your right hand, they'll give you a whole uniform. <laughs> you get that truck to Camp Custer. Goodbye. Now that Rochester, he can't get anything straight. I wonder if he's really in love. I wonder who that couple from Waukegan were. I wonder if Crosby run away with that money. Oh, well, tune in next week, folks, and find out. <laughs> Here's a new idea. Someone has suggested that in addition to meatless meals, what we need are some let's not talk about meat meals. Well, <laughs> sort of makes sense, doesn't it? Well, it's certainly our job to face any necessary food restrictions cheerfully and as well as intelligently. Well, one way to do both is simple. Plan your meals so as to include the food values you need every day by buying more of those plentiful foods that contain much of the nutriment of meat itself. Foods like whole grain cereals, cereals such as delicious toasty brown grape nuts flakes. They're plentiful, they're thrifty, and they supply many of the food essentials found in meat. Yes, in every bowl full of malty rich grape nuts flakes and milk, you get proteins, iron, calcium, phosphorus, and two of the important B vitamins niacin and B1. So grape nuts flakes can help you to make up for other food shortages. And they taste so delicious with that sweet as a nut flavor, that toasty crisp texture, you'll decide that grape nuts flakes are the cheerfulest breakfast dish you ever enjoyed. Better make it grape nuts flakes for tomorrow. was the last number of the 21st program of the new Grape Nuts Flake series. And we'll be with you next Sunday night broadcasting from Camp Custer, Michigan. Well, I got to run along now and be a judge on the Quiz Kids show. Good night, folks. <laughs> the Jack Benny program is written by Bill Maher and Ed Belloy. Bob Crosby and his orchestra will soon be seen in Judy Garland's new MGM picture presenting Lily Maher. This program is presented for Army personnel and does not constitute an endorsement of this product by the War Department. Ladies, next time you go shopping for Grape Nuts Flakes, ask your grocer for a package of Grape Nuts Wheat Meal, luscious hot cereal member of the popular Grape Nuts family. Your folks will clamor for hot Grape Nuts Wheat Meal. They'll shout out the praise of that roasted wheat flavor. They'll go for that glorious, full-bodied texture. 
Hot Grape Nuts Wheat Meal boasts whole grain food values. And, P.S., it cooks in three minutes. This program came to you from Chicago. This is the National Broadcasting Company.